When using laptops, we not only use the LCD display that is on the laptop itself, very often in a, a desk where you're plugging into a dock or you're plugging into an LCD projector, you're using the video output that's on the laptop to also display information on that other monitor. So troubleshooting video can sometimes be a bit of a challenge. There are some things you can look for. There are function keys on your keyboard that probably allow a secondary function that moves the video connection between the LCD that's on your laptop, perhaps to an external monitor. So instead, you can use the external monitor as your main resource to be able to view the video. Or there may be an option to have both simultaneously. In some cases, even use them as separate video sources where you can have one thing happening on your laptop screen and something else completely happening on the external monitor. There is also sometimes a switch that switches and knows when you close the, the top of your laptop whether it should be outputting to the LCD screen or automatically output to a third out external monitor. This is a, a sort of a refrigerator door effect where you close the door of your laptop, you close the lid of your laptop, it automatically knows now to go out and use that external monitor. This was on older laptops a physical switch. You could actually see the switch sticking up. You could put your finger on it and push it down, and the screen would go black, and it would send the information information out that external port. On newer systems, it's, an, it's a magnetic switch. You'll see that you don't even see anything. But if you close the lid, it somehow magically knows that it should be using its external port. And that's because there's a magnet there that recognizes you close the lid. And that helps a lot because those older physical switches could sometimes be damaged because the magnetic switch is all internal to the laptop. It's much less chance of it getting damaged. If you look at your keyboard, you can even see there's a function switch on my keyboard. And if you look on the F8 key in this bluer color, it says CRT LCD. Let's zoom up on that so you can see a little bit. So to move between the CRT, which is your external monitor, almost don't call them CRTs anymore because they're not really using those cathode ray tubes, but we know what they're talking about or the internal LCD of the, the laptop that we're using, we hold down this function key down here, and we hit the F8 key. And usually you'll get something on the screen that's telling you you're now changing the video from where it is now. Or you may not get a message at all. Depends on the laptop model and what software is loaded on it. But if you hit that, you'll notice that it goes out to that external monitor, and suddenly it springs to life just by using that combination of the function key and that secondary function that, in this case, is on the F8 key. If you're having problems with your LCD and something's not quite right with the screen that's on your laptop, using that external monitor is a great way to troubleshoot. So turn off your laptop, plug in an external monitor, turn on your laptop, and usually by default, laptops recognize that they're connected now to an external monitor. And when it's booting up, you'll see everything come up on the external monitor as well. So it's a good way to tell, is the problem with my LCD screen, or is it something with the video components of my laptop itself? That's a good way to help troubleshoot. You may also want to check the resolution of your LCD on your laptop. There's something called a native resolution. And when you purchase your laptop, you usually are purchasing an LCD screen with a particular resolution to it. And if you can match your operating system resolution to the resolution of your LCD screen, then those two things are going to have the clearest, the most crisp view that you're going to have. If you change the resolution in your operating system, you may notice it gets a little bit blurry, or it's not as crisp as it is when it's running at its native resolution. So check the manual, check the specifications for your laptop, make sure that it's synced up, that your operating system is really running at exactly the right resolution for that, that LCD screen type. If you have one laptop, you may find that certain laptops, even though it says it's a certain model, different machines may have been purchased with completely different LCD monitor types. So make sure you check the specifications for your specific laptop. Even if you have two sitting side by side that look identical, they could actually have different LCD screens on them. So make sure you know exactly the type of LCD screen on the laptop you happen to be using. If you start looking at some of the older LCD technologies, you may run into these passive matrix or active matrix comparisons. The passive matrix displays of old had a very slow refresh rate. It was almost at times difficult to follow the mouse whenever you moved it around the screen. These days, everything is using a much newer technology. Active matrix is almost always the norm these days. But it is a way that you'll be able to tell if you get on an older laptop and it's very slow in the way that it's refreshing the screen, you may be using one of those older passive matrix technologies. You should also keep in mind all of the different native resolutions that you may run into. 
if you're reading the specification and it says this laptop comes with XGA resolution, it's referring to extended graphics array and it's running at a native resolution of 1024 by 768. If it says the resolution is WUXGA, that means that it's 1920 by 1200, much bigger display there that's running widescreen ultra extended graphics array. Those are things you're going to need to know for your a certification exam. So it may be useful to help memorize those. And it also helps when you're looking at the specifications. When you're ready to buy a laptop, you'll be able to pick out those specific resolution types and know, oh, it's UXGA. That means it's a 1600 by 1200. You'll know that right off the top of your head. Inside of your LCD display that's on your laptop, behind everything is a light. And those lights are providing a light that shines through so that you're able to see what's there on your LCD screen. If you turn on your laptop and you're noticing you don't see anything there, it's very black, very dark, but you can kind of make out exactly what's on the screen. You can sort of read it. If you look really closely, the problem may be that your backlight has failed or perhaps more more commonly, the LCD inverter has failed. This is a piece of technology that takes the input that we're having DC inside of our laptop, these uh, fluorescents that are used as the lights behind the scenes need AC sometimes to be able to send that light out. And so these will invert the video uh, power so that you're able to take that DC and convert it into something the light can use. If those fail, these are pictures of some inverters, if those fail, then your light goes out. It burns out the light, essentially. And you may need to replace those inverters to get that light working again. So look closely. You can usually find those inverters to purchase on a third-party market uh, via eBay and other sources online. And you may have to take apart the laptop, replace the inverter, plug it back in again, and see if that works for you. So look very closely. If you see nothing on the screen, it's probably not the backlight. So that gives you some options to use and think about things that you may want to do to troubleshoot that video if you ever run into that.